Hello viewers, uh, so far we have been uh, seeing uh, what all are the different types of virtualization. Uh, we have so far discussed the six types of different virtualization in cloud computing. So in today's video, we will be seeing what are the open source architectures which are available uh, in cloud. Uh, mainly the private uh, cloud while you design for a certain infrastructure or for a certain organization. Uh, what are the different types of uh, opportunities uh, for different various platforms of cloud which are provided by different vendors. So today in this video we will be seeing what is the eucalyptus architecture. We will be seeing its architecture here and what are its components and what they actually do and contribute to this architecture. So stay tuned to this video to understand what is eucalyptus architecture in cloud computing. This is Ranjiraj and you are streaming on the Steady Beast. So uh, first of all, uh, eucalyptus, uh, it's a name of a plant, a medicinal plant. So nothing has to do with that, uh, with this cloud. So uh, it's basically a Linux based distribution or a software architecture and it provides two main components, EC2 and S3. EC2 uh, stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. Cloud Compute, that's why it is C2 and it is Simple Storage System, that is S3, which is a storage platform and it basically uh, provides high performance computing so whenever there is a demand for any high processing or for high performance uh, you blindly go for this architecture that is the eucalyptus architecture now uh, this diagram is very simple but you have to be very careful while drawing these diagrams so basically we have uh, this five main components that is we have the very first that is the cluster controller that is cc then you have the cloud controller that is CLC, then node controller NC, then you have the walrus storage controller that is WS3. It is basically this S3 that is a simple storage system. And finally you have this storage controller that is SC and one more optional component is there. I have not considered in this architecture that is uh, VB that is VMware broker for intermediate access uh, of the VM for ESX and ESXi systems. So uh, first of all, let us get on to this diagram. So stay focused to this diagram. So uh, in this diagram, you have different components like you have the cloud controller, uh, this one that is CLC, then it is connected to the walrus that is uh, for storage purpose. Then you have the cluster controller, then alongside you have the SC that is storage controller Similarly, you have the cluster controller and storage controller. So this cluster controller has got many number of node controllers. So this is not limited to three. It can be for any numbers. It is up till n. Similarly, for a cluster controller here, uh, it may be of any number. So this has got no limit of uh, any number of uh, node controller it can handle. So that is infinite. And uh, this cluster controller only will contain this node controller and the uh, node controller will perform uh, each and every type of operations it is intended to do. And so uh, one main portion or one main uh, section of this cluster controller along with the storage controller with cluster controller having many number of node controllers forms one cluster. So it is categorized as cluster A and similarly here for cluster B. So uh, these are the two clusters and so each cluster will contain a cluster controller as well as storage controller and this cluster controller will have n number of different node controllers in it. So this is the basic architecture and when it comes to this linkage, this linkage has to be done very carefully because uh, cluster controller is controlled by this cloud controller as well as this storage controller similarly here, similarly here. But this storage controller is also connected to this walrus. Since walrus is used for storage mechanism, it is converted or it is uh, connected to the storage controller. So this main thing has to be kept in mind. Whereas walrus will not connect to cluster controller uh, here and here. So that is uh, mainly controlled by this cloud controller itself. So this is the uh, main diagram. And when you go above it, uh, you have different applications uh, hitting on this cloud controller that is from the web browsers you have. You may have the SOAP based protocols, you have the REST based protocols. So many kind of hits can be uh, given to this cloud controller as well as to the walrus. So uh, this is the basic architecture. This you can find in the Google itself. 
uh, I have put from the Google only. So it is the fundamental architecture of the eucalyptus for cloud computing. So this is the basic architecture wherever you go, you will get to see this diagram for eucalyptus. Now let us move on to the depths or the five main components or five main uh, vital parts of this eucalyptus. What makes it more high performance computing end? So first of all, you have the cluster controller that is CC, which manages one or more node controllers like here, as you can see one or more three or it can be in any numbers. So it basically uh, communicates with this node controller and cloud controller that is CLC and simultaneously manages the networking between these two. So cluster controller sits between these two components. So it communicates everything between the node controller to the cloud controller. So it acts as an intermediary and all for networking purpose. Next, uh, when you go up, you have the cloud controller that is CLC. This naming has to be kept in mind because cluster controller it is CC and for cloud controller it is CLC. So when you write uh, or when you draw this diagram, make sure you don't use any uh, abbreviations or short forms like this. Uh, instead, you have to write the full name here. So uh, this is the cloud controller that is CLC. So this CLC is the front end. Since you get many of the hits uh, from the different kinds of applications, this uh, obviously should be the front end. So it is uh, compliant for uh, Amazon EC2 that is Elastic Cloud Compute and Simple Storage Systems that is S3 and it is connected to all the web services to the client tools on one side and connected to the rest of the components of the eucalyptus on the other side. So uh, this is the way it controls. So it's just a basically a UI you can say uh, where you can access all the uh, elasticity and the dashboards and all kind of stuffs and also the uh, storage parts of this eucalyptus cloud. Next uh, it comes to node controller that is NC. Uh, it is the smallest component or it is uh, more over to a granular level. When you move on to the depths of this eucalyptus architecture, the smallest component will be the node controller. And this node controller manages all the life cycle of the instances initiated on this. And uh, it is like uh, you uh, initiate one kind of activity here, then next year, next year. So it's like uh, the entire activity uh, is carried on one node controller. So this uh, one node controller takes care of one activity. So it's entire uh, activity, lifetime activity is uh, computed over the node controller, which is inspected over by the cl uh, cluster controller followed by the cloud controller. Now uh, this NC interacts with the operating systems, hypervisors and the CC, that is the cluster controller simultaneously uh, with this uh, architecture. Next, move on to the Walrus storage controller that is WS3. It is the simplest file storage system. It is only used for uh, creating these images, machine images, as well as snapshots. Snapshots and machine images are mainly used for creating checkpoints. If there is any disaster occurred in this architecture and you have to recover that, then uh, that snapshots or system images or machine images will be useful for recovery purpose. So snapshots are used for that purpose. And uh, it uh, basically stores and processes all the files uh, since it has some kind of S3 APIs got along with it. So it does take care of that also. Next we have the storage controller that is the final component SC. Uh, it is like uh, not the Walrus. Walrus is a small part of that. Storage is the major part. So storage controller allows creation of different kinds of volumes across different machines. Snapshots of volumes means volumes in terms of different different snapshots. So it's like a huge repository where you can extract any kind of uh, check, uh, any kind of snapshots required for checkpoints. Uh, now this also provides persistent block storage over AOE or iSCSI to instances. AOE is for the ATA over the internet. Uh, ATA is for the SATA or the PATA, the Serial uh, Advanced Technology Attachment. So A uh, for A stands for the Advanced Technology Attachment. ATA. Uh, ATA may be uh, related to the SATA or the PATA, serial as well as the parallel ATA or the iSCSI that is internet over the small computer system interface for managing all the processor level activities uh, to instances. And I have discussed, uh, said one more component is there that is the VMware broker VB. So it is the only optional component in this Walrus architecture and so I have not considered that in this. So it's basically uh, is optional or optional in the sense it will be uh, provided, not provided to all the customers unless and until they are subscribers of the eucalyptus architecture. 
So who all are the subscribers of this Eucalyptus architecture or in a monthly subscription basis, they only have the access to this VMware broker that is the VB and it is uh, accessed from the VMware vCenter uh, where you provide or access all the intermediate uh, VMware tools along the ESX or ESXi components. And also uh, for some hypervisors also, uh, you may use the VMware broker, which is a broker for intermediate access and all for purposes. So well, that's all about the Eucalyptus Arbitration in Cloud Computing. So hope you enjoyed this video, found this video helpful. Please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching this video.